Hello everyone, this is Shane from Studio 2 Magic, and today we're going to create the Star Wars Dark Saber effect. I'm going to break this tutorial up into two parts so that it doesn't get too long. Both parts are available right now though. This part's going to cover how to create the basic dark saber effect. And in the next tutorial, we're going to cover how to do the part where the blade gets turned on and put a little bit of the energy effect on the sharp edge. The Darksaber first appeared in 2010 in the Clone Wars cartoon series, but it can now be seen on the Mandalorian series on Disney Plus, and it's, it's freaking cool. There's a couple of approaches to making the Darksaber effect. On the Mandalorian series, they use a lighted saber prop and then put a 3D model of the blade over the glow, and it looks amazing, but it's of course time consuming and requires a lot of editing and post. Well, I wanted to create a method that looks really good, but it could be somewhat automated. I also wanted to keep it fast and cheap so anyone can do it. Here's a couple of the shots that I came up with. I do have a few of the sound effects for the Darksaber that I put together, and if you'd like to get them for free, I'm putting a link in the description below on where you can get them. Now this tutorial isn't going to show you how to do the CG background or R2-D2 or the saber welding effect. That would have to be several other tutorials. This one is just about how to do the Darksaber effect itself. And if you like filmmaking tutorials like this, please subscribe. You know, it's easy to do. It really does help us out. And besides, this method of doing the Darksaber is unique. No other tutorial out there that I've found is doing it like this. So you truly get some unique information by coming here. So please be sure to come back. Okay, on with the show. Here's a few of the things that you'll need. A blade. It can be out of anything really, like wood, metal, or even cardboard if you make it stiff enough. The blade part's going to be covered with tape anyways. And that's the next thing you'll need, is a way to color the blade. You can paint it, but make sure that it's a very flat color. You don't want highlights reflecting in the color and messing up your key. I actually used green screen gaffer's tape and it worked great. The other thing that you will need for this is Adobe After Effects. And that's really about all you'll need for this method. Almost all VFX shots require a little bit of pre-planning before you hit record, and this is no different. What we will be keying out is the colored blade and having After Effects create a mask from that key. And then we'll add Video Copilot's Saber effect onto those created masks. So that means we need the Saber blade to be its own color. If you're going to be shooting in front of green trees and green grass, then I'd suggest you use blue gaffer's tape or blue paint for your key. And if the blue sky is going to be behind the saber, then use green for your blade. And try to make sure the saber doesn't go in front of the blue and green in the same shot. This type of planning will make your life a lot easier when it comes to editing the footage. I'll put some links below for the gaffer tape that I've been using from Amazon. They do make colored duct tape, but again, it's a little bit shiny and the gaffer tape is very flat in color. So if you're actually making a fan film, I'm going to suggest you have two Darksaber props. One with the blade on it, and one that is just the handle only. If you're doing several shots, like in a fan film, you'll end up wanting both. Having the handle without a blade is good for when you want to have it hanging from a belt or when you want to have just make a shot of the saber igniting or retracting. I built my blade out of sheet metal. I have access to a shop where I could do this, so I just went there and built one from memory. It's not just like the one from the show, but it's good enough for this tutorial, so we'll go with it. So at this point, we have our saber ready and the blade is green, so we're ready to shoot something. I picked a few different backgrounds for tests and even tried it in front of a Christmas tree. And just as I thought, the green blade in front of a green tree didn't work very well. I was actually able to pull a key, but the edge wasn't very solid and it didn't look very good. You might even notice that there was some light being cast from the blade onto the tree. And the way I did that was to attach a short strip of LED lights onto one side of the saber and then make sure that that side never faces the camera. I ran the power wire through my sleeve to hide it and got a few interesting effects as the saber moves around. Most of the time though, I'm not gonna use that LED strip unless I really need it because it makes it more difficult. One other thing I realized I should try to avoid is casting shadows of the saber onto the wall behind me. It's not terrible, I guess, but it seems a little strange that a light source is casting a shadow, so you might avoid it when possible. For shots where the saber gets turned on or ignited, you would probably just use the handle only prop and create the blade turning on and then hand animate it to follow the handle. But if you don't have a handle only prop, like I didn't, 
you might have to paint out some frames of the green blade before the saber turns on. In these cases, you need to be sure you get a background plate. It's just a shot of the background with no actors in it. And then when you erase the blade, you can replace it with the background that's behind it. It's also very important to keep the camera on a tripod for these shots so that it will all line up the same. It's also a good idea to turn your ISO and white balance to manual so it will perfectly match your background and foreground footage. I am going to show you how to do a shot of the Darksaber getting turned on in the next tutorial, but for this one, let's go ahead and start with the Darksaber effect. So let's open up our clip into After Effects and get started. All right, so I've got this clip, which is about 12 seconds long. I shot at a higher shutter speed so that there is very little motion blur when the blade swings. This makes it easier to auto trace a mask when the blade never becomes a blur. I will add some motion blur back in at the end of all of this with pixel motion blur. Now I picked this clip because it has two other challenges for this effect. One is when the blade goes behind my head, it gets split into two parts. And the other is a point where the blade has its edge facing the camera. It becomes almost invisible. And I'll show you how to address both of these issues. First, I want to rename my footage layer and call it main footage. Next, I want to go into the keying dropdown in effects and drag and drop the key light 1.2 effect into this layer. I select the eyedropper under select color and select a point on the blade. Now I switch the view from final result to screen matte. I need to adjust this so that the blade is black and everything else is white. If I had a tree or something else green in the background, I would need to just mask it out. So in key light on the screen matte effects dropdown, I'm going to make adjustments until everything is pure white except for the blade, which will be pure black. I can usually do this with just the clip white and clip black settings, but I might need to tweak a few other settings also in this dropdown. We are going to need to create a mask around the blade, but instead of doing this all by hand, which would take forever, we can use this white and black image to have After Effects do it for us. I make sure that my main footage layer is selected and then I go to the top and open the layer dropdown and then choose Auto Trace. In the window that opens up, I set time span to work area. I set channel to luminance and check the blur box and set it to one pixel before auto trace. I leave the invert box unchecked. I set tolerance to two and threshold to 50. And then I set minimum area to 10 and corner roundness to one. If I click the preview box, I can get a preview of how the mask will look when it's finished. I click OK and it goes to work. It's going to take a couple of minutes for it to do this 12 second clip and it might even look like it's stopped. Mine actually says not responding, but if I just wait, it finally finishes. So now that it's finished, I see some masks on the screen. When I open the mask dropdown, I see that there's actually three. You might have more, but we only need to keep the ones that are outlining the blade. There is a mask that's created around my whole white image and I can just select it and delete it. For the masks that are left, you need to go through your footage and see which masks are ever being used on the blade and which ones are not. Delete the ones that are not. I have two masks left. One stays around the blade the whole time and the other one only gets used when the blade gets divided into two as it passes behind my head. When we use Video Copilot's Saber effect, it will affect all of the masks on the screen. So we need to make sure that the other mask is only on the screen when it's being used. So I go to the first keyframe of that extra mask and find when it's actually being used. Then on the frame right before that, I select that mask and drag it off of the screen. And then at the end of where it's being used, I go to the next frame where it's not needed and I again drag it off of the screen. Now it's only on the screen when it's needed. And by the way, you can step forward and backwards through the frames in After Effects by using page up and page down. So we have the black blade masked out the entire time that it's on the screen, except for one point, the spot where the edge of the blade is all the camera can see. It's such a thin line that it couldn't pull a green screen from it, but that's okay. We're gonna fix that later in the next step. So let's just leave it alone for now. With our masks finished, we can delete the key light effect from the main footage. We don't need that there anymore. Now I want to create a new solid and make sure it's completely pure black and we'll name it Saber Glow. The next step is to duplicate the mask that we created into this new layer. So we go to the first keyframe of our mask in our main footage, 
which in this case is the first frame of the clip. It's important that you are at the first keyframe of your mask when you copy and paste it so that the mask moves exactly the same in both clips. So, on the first frame, I click mask under my main footage. I make sure I don't just select one of the masks, I select mask, which will include all of them. Since I'm using a PC, I can use the Control C shortcut to copy, and then go to the Saber Glow layer and use Control V to paste the mask. If you can't figure out the shortcut, then the copy and paste are also in the drop down under edit at the top. I actually don't need the mask on the main footage layer anymore, so I'm gonna just go ahead and delete those out of there. I'm ready now to add my glow effect. I'm going to use an add-on for After Effects called Saber. It's made by Video Copilot and I'll put a link for it below. It's free and it's amazing. If you follow this channel at all, you'll know that I use it all the time. It was made to create lightsabers, but it's great for tons of other things. Anyway, I drag my Saber effect into my Saber Glow layer. I'm going to go through how to set this up like I did, but you might find something else that you like better. You can create a lot of variations that look really cool, but for this tutorial, I set preset to Arc Reactor and on glow color, I set it to a very light blue, just almost white. And if you want to use the exact color I did, you can enter it into the color window right here by typing C5CEE0. I hit OK or return and then set glow intensity to 124.5, glow spread to 0.05, glow bias to 0.34, and core size to 0.30. Now, in the Customize Core dropdown, all we need to do is change the core type to Layer Mask. Now we can see that our effect moves onto the masks. Next, we want to go into the Flicker dropdown and change the Flicker Intensity to 172 and the Flicker Speed to 21.6. And that's all we have to do in Flicker. Next, we go into the Distortion dropdown, and in here we have two types of distortion. So let's open up the Glow Distortion dropdown first, and all we need to do is change the distortion amount to zero. And then we open up the Core Distortion dropdown, and we also change the distortion amount to zero. And the last thing we need to do to the Saber Glow layer is to change the mode from Normal to Add. You can use Screen if you want, but it seemed like Add worked best for this clip for me. As I play the footage, I can already see that the effect is happening and it looks pretty good and it's flickering like it's supposed to, but there's still a problem when the blade edge is facing the camera. The glow effect all but goes away. It's actually easy to fix, so I go to the frame and click on the mask so I can see them. I step one frame backwards and I can see that the mask doesn't quite go all the way to the end of the saber, so I just drag the top point of the mask on to where it does. And on the next frame, I just drag the top point all the way to the end of the blade. I adjust any other frames that need it and then it's fixed. Now when I play the video, the blade glow remains on the whole time. I'm going to show you now how to add the black part of the blade, and that might be all that you need for most of your shots. But after that, I'll show you how to make the saber turn on and even add some of that energy effect that appears on the edge of the blade. But for now, let's create a new solid and you can make it black. You might want to make it slightly less than black because this will be the color of the blade. Let's call it saber black and hit OK. We are again going to copy that mask data from the saber glow layer to the saber black layer, just like we did before. Just make sure that you're on the first keyframe for the mask of the glow layer, and like before, copy it and then paste it over. The screen is black, but that's just because the mask modes in the Saber Black layer need to be changed. Right now they're set to none, but we need to set them to add. I also like to set a little bit of feathering on this, so I set each mask feather to about two. You can play with how much feathering you want, but on the TV show, it's not a very feathered edge. At this point, this could be the end of the tutorial for you. This could be your entire workflow for every clip. When I'm finished, I usually do add an adjustment layer at the top of everything and I add pixel motion blur. And I'll show you how to do that at the end of part two of this video. After you do a few shots like this, you'll get pretty quick at it. I can usually do one in about five minutes plus the time of the auto trace. But that concludes this part of the tutorial. If you wanna follow us into part two, we're gonna show you how to have the blade get turned on or activated and show you how to create some of the energy effect that appears on the bottom of the blade. So if you'd like to see that, just click right here. It's ready to go. Hot off the presses, ready to play. Check that out. Should be good.